All right, thank you everyone. Good evening. Um, again, my name is Dave Smith from Point Define Soon Aquarium. I'll be telling you a little bit more about myself, but just first let me say thank you for allowing me to come up here and speak with you guys tonight. This is by far the nicest place I've ever been to. Uh, normally they put me in little dive shops in the back room with the compressor and we talk about rockfish, and so this is definitely the, the top uh, right here. And uh, I was driving up here today from Tacoma through the cities, through I-5 and on the highway, and just, you know, it's kind of crazy and getting up here. And as soon as I got onto the ferry area, and I've been here before, I've been to the San Juans before, but I've never been to Orcas Island before. And for you guys who live here, you're so lucky. I get on that ferry and you can just feel it all just kind of going away. And you see the, the cascades are out there and you can see the islands and the currents moving around the beaches. Just absolutely fabulous. So you're really lucky to be here. And just me on that journey just here, just reminds me how much I love Puget Sound. And when you're up here and you're just reminding me of that love and you're renewing that love, you remember that things that you love and things that you care about, you want to protect them, you want to conserve them. And not just Puget Sound, all the things that make up the ecosystem of Puget Sound, whether that be an orca, the salmon, a dungeness crab, the lonely pinto abalone, what have you, and the rockfish. And now when people talk about animals of conservation need in Puget Sound, we think about those abalone and the orcas and the salmon and the coastlines and our streams and our rivers. But has anyone really heard about rockfish and their needs yet? <laughs> Probably not. So that's my job. They're kind of the underdog of Puget Sound. So it's a kind of a unique topic, but they really have an excellent story. And I want to share that story with you guys. And hopefully by the end of the talk, you'll be able to carry on that story and tell some of your friends and show them they're actually a really cool animal here in the Sound. All right, so tonight we'll just cover a few basic things. Uh, the natural history uh, species overview. There are hundreds of rockfish out there. The last thing you guys want to see is a hundred slides of me showing you different fish. Uh, I won't do that to you today. There's uh, Jana Nichols who does reef. If you ever really want to know about the rockfish individually and how to identify them and their unique characteristics, she's the best one for that. But tonight we're just going to gloss over the whole species of the whole group. Of course, we'll be talking about the threatened species and the conservation efforts that are currently ongoing here in the Sound and most importantly, how you guys can help make a difference as well. So who am I? Uh, you're not going to see me on the Discovery Channel anytime soon or Animal Planet. Uh, I'm just a local biologist here. Uh, I got my undergrad from UC Santa Cruz. So I know the fighting slugs, finally. Yeah, this is our mascot. I wasn't really sure where I was going to go to college. And they said that our mascot is the banana slug. And I said, I'm coming here. Uh, so that was easy enough. And uh, of course, I took the standard marine science classes. And I started scuba diving in 1994. I really learned how to dive in California. It's another amazing place. And during my time there, I became what's known as a scientific diver. And if there's any biologists out there, or people know the scientific method, it's already challenging to begin with. But when you add the surge and swell of the ocean currents, and you're going like this back and forth underwater, trying to count a snail or algae, it can be quite challenging. So it's a unique dynamic, but I absolutely loved it. Um, and after my academic years, uh, started my professional years, I'd always worked with uh, aquatic animals and a variety of animals from the pet stores and pet trade days, always in the backyard, just pulling out frogs and whatever I could find out of my backyard, putting them in aquariums. And so it just seemed like a natural succession to go ahead and work for a public zoo or an aquarium. Uh, my first job was in Connecticut. If you know the movie Mystic Pizza, uh, there actually is a Mystic Connecticut, and there's an aquarium down there. Spent about three years out there, but I really missed the West Coast, so I moved back here in about 2003, and now I currently work at the Point Defined Zoo and Aquarium in Tacoma. It's a small little end of the road zoo and aquarium. We've got a lot of cool animals out there. If you've never been, please check us out. Uh, and I've been here ever since, and I just have an absolutely great time. But most importantly, is at the end of the day, I'm just another person that lives in Washington and loves where I live. Uh, whether it be in the South Sound, the Central Sound, out in the Olympics, Eastern Washington, there's a lot of stuff out here. And, as long as you're impassioned about it, you know, it doesn't matter what you do for a living, just enjoy it. So anyways, enough about me. This is who I am. We'll have a quick review on fish here today. Now, this is not a rockfish. This is a, a largemouth bass. But for those of you guys who can't remember, this is the front of the fish. This is the back of the fish. That's the top, and that's the bottom. Uh, the real thing I want you to take away from this one is that uh, there's two dorsal fins on the rockfish, and they have two different types. There's a spiny dorsal fin, which has like a much harder uh, spine in them. That's the rigid spine. And then there's a second one that's got so soft dorsal fins, and we'll talk a little about, more about that. And then fish do have ears, believe it or not. They're not these big flappy things like you and I have. Uh, sound travels way better in water than it does in air. 
but basically there's a little bone right here that's part of their ear structure, and we'll talk more about that later. So that's our basic fish anatomy. Any questions? Front, back, top, bottom? Okay, everybody's got it. All right, now, so rockfish are members of the family Scorpinidae, and scorpion, what comes to your mind? Sting. Sting, poison, exactly, all these bad things here. So their tropical cousins include the lionfish, which a lot of people know about. That's the fish on the bottom, the scorpion, leaf scorpion fish on your left, and the stonefish on the right. Now, these are all tropical specimens. The lionfish and the leaf scorpion fish can give you a really nasty sting. It hurts a little bit more than a bee sting. The stonefish can actually kill you. It's that, that potent. And the way these animals deliver that, that poison, if you will, is that their spines on the top of their body are like hypodermic needles. And at the base of those spines is a little venom gland. And you put your hand on it, shoom, and there it goes. You get envenomated. Now, here's a quick trivia question. What's the difference between poisonous and venomous? Oh, that's good. Quiet crowd. Um, a poisonous thing is like a mushroom that you eat. You ingest it. Venomous is something that injects you with this poison. So these animals are venomous. You couldn't eat a rockfish. That's fine. Uh, you're not going to get sick from them. Just don't eat the spines. It's pretty easy. And so rockfish all share this common trait. Now, so what else is a rockfish? They go by all sorts of common names. Does anyone fish here locally? What do you guys call them? Rockfish, rockfish, OK. When I came here, rock cod, red snapper. They have so many different names from these. There's Portuguese came over here in California, moved up the coast, all sorts of different names. So let's just talk about family things. Up in the top left there is a true cod, a true Pacific cod. All Pacific cod have three dorsal fins. So you can see them, one, two, three. And they also have a little chin barbel right here. So that is not a rockfish, not a cod at all. This other fish right here is the true snapper. This happens to be an Atlantic tropical species. There are no snappers at all on the west coast. Boom, so it's not that one either. And if we look down here, your bottom left, this is your basic rockfish right here. This is the basic form. They come in a variety of different colors and patterns. But at the end of the day, if you just kind of think of this silhouette, you've got yourself a rockfish. And if we just run down a couple of the quick characteristics here, again, oval-shaped body, somewhat compressed on the sides. They have spines on the top of their head, and I don't mean the dorsal spines, their actual head right here. Almost all rockfish are very spiny. It's like Velcro. Like if you touch them with a net, shunk, they just stick right to it. Uh, and those spines hook on quite just about anything. Uh, 13 dorsal spines, the soft rays, the venom, we talked about that. They have internal fertilization and give live birth. We'll be talking more about reproduction later. They have high, very high numbers of offspring, and they're always found in cool or temperate waters. And those waters can be found anywhere from basically Southern California into Baja, Mexico, all the way into the Bering Sea. So I've got a little map here where we find rockfish. And they're predominantly on the west coast of North America. There's just over 100 species. And for all you scientists out there, if these numbers are wrong, I'm sorry, it's close. Uh, science is always changing about how the species are uh, divided up. So that's uh, constantly in flux. But you can see there, all the way from Baja, up the Pacific coast, around Alaska, over into Russia and Japan, just a smattering on the eastern seaboard over there, and just a few in the southern hemisphere. The greatest diversity of rockfish is actually based out of Southern California. And that's probably because these animals originated from a tropical environment and just started spreading north. And keep in mind, there's all these ice ages that kept coming down and coming down and coming down. So the greatest diversity is close to Southern California. And as far as how long they've been on this planet, well, they're relatively new. Down here, we basically have our first jawless fishes down here. We've got sharks showing up about 400 million years ago. Your basic bony fish, and if you follow that all the way up, oh, just 30 million years or so, that's, that's not a lot. That's not a lot of time as far as evolution is concerned. So these fish are actually, even though there's about 100 or so, they're still constantly evolving and changing. And as for scientists, this makes it really hard to classify them as they change and speciate. Just kind of fun, though. A little background there for you. And of course, if they're called a rockfish, they only live in rocky habitats, right? No, not at all. And it depends on what phase these animals are in in their life history. Now, rockfish do live in rocky habitats. They call them uh, high complex, high relief complex habitats. But it depends on what stage you're at. When they're first born and they're a little small fish, maybe an inch or two along, they don't want to be hanging out in the big boy area right now. They'll just be eaten by larger fish. So a lot of them go into the estuaries, the eelgrass beds, small rocky cobble areas. And the South Sound or Puget Sound is a very complex environment. Where you guys live up here up north, 
very hard granite basalt rock, uh, rocky cliffs, lots of big kelp. Down in the South Sound, we have more clay and sand down there. We don't have the big kelp structures to hold on to. Uh, and also we have a little bit more influx of the river environment as well. So how much salt is in our water is a little bit different in the South Sound. And those fish inhabit that as well. You could even find some of these rockfish sometimes in the intertidal areas like tide pools, but it's not super common. And as they tend to get bigger, then they start moving into deeper habitats or their adult habitat. Now their adult habitats may be a rocky or sandy clay bank somewhere. They may be a kelp forest. There may be a rocky reef somewhere. And some actually decide to live pelagically in the open ocean. So out here in Washington, this part, we have blacks, blues, and yellowtails, which are found, uh, again, is floating around in the water column, nowhere near any kind of substrate at all. And some are found extremely deep. So what we have here is more of a vertical stratification of where you can find rockfish. And you can find them in this entire range here. The numbers you see on your right are in meters. Okay, So we may see a rockfish in an inner tidal pool, 60 feet, 100 feet. Well, we think that's deep. Oh, OK, now we've got an ROV. Now we're down to 1,000 feet. That's very deep. 7,000 meters, 21,000 feet is where these rockfish can live, some of them. So they're occupying a wide variety of habitats right there. All right, now, one of my favorite things about these rockfish is their age. And so people always want to know, well, how, how can you tell how old a fish is? It doesn't carry a birth certificate. It doesn't have a passport. Uh, so how do you do that? Well, what scientists do is they actually can remove a bone from their ear. And we talked about where their ear bone is. And that bone is called an otolith. In the same way that a tree is growing, lays down a new ring. And this is a picture on the left at the tree stump. Didn't really come out super well. Uh, but you can age a tree based on counting those rings. You can do the exact same thing by looking at that, that bone in the ear, the otolith, and figure out how old a rockfish can get. So without the scientists in the group, anybody have any guesses on the oldest rockfish in years? How old the oldest rockfish is? 60. That's an excellent guess. That's pretty good. Seven, what's that? 175. That's another guess. All right, these are really good guesses. They're both absolutely right. Average rockfish ages is somewhere between 60 and 80 years old. But the oldest known rockfish was actually 205 years old. Now, I love this slide, by the way. It just cracks me up every time. It reminds me of like a Bugs Bunny cartoon with the X's. Anyways, so over here, if we were out fishing today, I was out with some of my friends. We were out in their boat. And we caught this fish on our left. We happened to be in Alaska earlier today. And we caught uh, this one fish. And I believe it is the short raker. Uh, it was 205 years old, 205 years old. And to put that in perspective of how old that fish is, things have passed over time. So when that fish was first born, Thomas Jefferson was president. And Thomas Jefferson was the third president of the United States. And right now, we're on our 44th. Okay, That's how much time has passed for that animal. The one on our right here is the, um, uh, excuse me, the uh, short, uh, short raker. And that one can be found on the west coast of uh, Washington. That one's only just a few years younger, 156 years old. And in 1855, again, about 50 people lived in the village of Seattle. Uh, and it wasn't so much a village. It was just a more of like a, a small little, well, actually, it was a village. It wasn't a city yet. But the man, Chief Seattle, was actually still alive. Again, over the course of this animal's lifetime, they've seen that entire thing. So extremely long lived. They do kind of have a max size for most of them, but yeah, the longer they live, they kind of get a little bit larger, but then there's a bigger component to that, and we're going to talk about that in reproduction. So I've got a real large one here to show you. Um, so with reproduction, uh, sexes are separate, separate boys and separate girls. And without going into a lot of details, in the fish world, that's actually kind of uncommon. A lot of fish start off as boys, and then they switch to girls, and girls go to boys, and it gets kind of crazy. In this case, it's really simple. You're either boy, born a boy or a girl rockfish, which makes it easy. Uh, it takes them a long time to become mature where they can reproduce, so seven to 10 years on average. But for some of those fish I just showed you, it may be 20 years before they're ready to mature, uh, before they're ready to breed. There is internal fertilization. And again, the tricky thing there is that the two fish, the boy and the girl, have to come together to make babies. Um, where some fish out there, they can just go ahead and just release stuff into the water, and eh, it'll probably work out. Um, that means you actually have to find a male or female. 